Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is have dried out my clay. And what I've done is I, I've made it so that it's leather hard. I can still move the clay, but it's, it's pretty dried out so that it's not totally dry. It's about leather hard. Leather hard means it will feel a lot like leather, okay? You're going to take some moist, wet clay, and this is going to anchor your pot onto this wheel because we need to trim off this ugly edge and the thick part. I did find a pot in the kiln yesterday that was unfinished. It had initials MC on it and it had a huge bottom. And you can't put anything in there because that will just blow up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the wheel very slowly because what I want to do is I want to see if I've got the center of this in the middle. And I just kind of scratch it. If you don't have a fingernail, you can use a tool. And you pick off all this good dried up stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I'm close to the middle. Well, it looks like I'm pretty close to the middle. Now the point in tooling is to clean the pot up and make leave a foot. So I'm going to hold this wheel in the place that my pot in my in my one quarter area that I'm working. Now, which way am I working if I'm working in this area? Left, you're right. I'm working in my left hand. You can work left or right with this. If you're doing it right hand, you're going to let it slide through here. If you're going to work left-handed, I'm working in this area, this quarter of the wheel. And you always make sure that it drags through. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly peeling off any remainder of the bulk of my pot so that it's not, um, so that it smooths it out and looks beautiful. Now remember, you can make funky pots out of this. Now when I say that, I would add things to it. I might add different decorative elements to it. And I can't believe I got it in the center because I usually never do. If it's not in the center, you just move it over a little bit. That's what these are holding on for. But it seems like I just set it in the center by looking at the circles. And that's, I always have to move it. So this is working. So I'll just leave it, let it be. If it doesn't look like it's in the center, you'll be able to tell right away. Because it'll look like it's, it's going ba-bump, 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 like we talked about before. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to mark off where my foot's going to be. And I'm going to make a little ridge just on the inside with this pointy part of the tool. I'm going to hold this very still, working at 6 o'clock. And I'm going to set this down. And I'm going to make a foot. Now I can see I'm a little tiny bit off. You take that clay. This stuff's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. I'm going to leave this part as the foot. Why do we need a foot? One of the things is, is it, it helps your pot from breaking. It also helps from scratching your tables. And you don't want to push too hard in this area because what would happen is, is you'd go right through the center and you don't want to go through the center of your pot. So a good way to check it is to tap on it and see if it's still got some. Sometimes I know how thick my pot is and then I'm okay. Another reason you do this is for glazing. Because I can glaze right up to my foot and still have a pretty pot. So I'm gonna put a little ridge on this side so that my glaze can go right up to this edge. So when I see my pot from the table, this little foot part is the only part that doesn't have a um, glaze on it. So this is, so it looks really neat. Trim it up a little more. And when I get it right where I want it, I look at the pot, stop the wheel, you can dust things off. And all these goodies go back into the slip bucket. You can also take your sponge, your special tooling sponge, get a little bit of water on here. Not a lot, but I'm just going to smooth it out because I see some bumpy spots that I want to smooth out. 
I'm working at 9 to 6 rather than 3 to 9 because I would be doing it over there if I was right-handed, doing it right-handed. But I just smooth this out just a bit just because I like it to be the best that I can make it. Now, my pot is done and I'm ready to take it off. And to take it off, all I have to do is dust my crumbs away, take these pieces, and keep them fresh. Look how they did not stick to the pot. And the reason why is because this is wetter than that is. And remember, the rule of pottery is that you cannot stick wet clay to dry clay. Even if you want to, it's going to fall off. Okay? So there's my pot. Now what else can I do? I can scribe into it. I can glaze it with a fancy glaze. I can kind of take my finger. I see some little spots here that look a little rough, but sometimes I like those little rough spots because it looks like, um, you know, an organic pot. So now I'm ready to let it completely dry unless I want to add decora decoration to it, score it, slip it, blend it. Also, you can scratch into it to create a design. Don't just scratch Go M Blue or Go KHS. Um, try to really make it perfect. You can make a stencil out of a piece of paper, lay it on there, and do it very beautiful because this pot will last longer than you will. Isn't that amazing? Thanks. You're all set.